Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this video in which I'm going to talk about registrations for hymn playing. When you sit down at the organ to play a hymn, you have so many different options in front of you. And the choice of stops will be dictated by a number of factors. One of them will be how large the group you're accompanying is, what sort of voices are in the group, and the space that you're playing in. The volume and the quality of the sound should respond to the type of singing. If you're accompanying a small group of singers, you might want to have a very quiet registration for the purpose of keeping them in tune and in time. Whereas if you're accompanying a full church, perhaps on Easter Day or Christmas Day, of people singing their favorite hymns and carols, then you're going to need something much bigger, much brighter, much stronger. But what about on an average Sunday morning? Imagine that you have a congregation of 50 people there's some good singers in your congregation, but on the whole, they're quite timid. What sort of registration can you choose, not just to accompany them, but to help them project and sing out a bit more? You might like, first of all, to choose a sort of basic middle of the road registration. My own personal middle of the road standard registration is eights and fours on the great and swell coupled together with a pedal coupled. So here on the swell, I've got three eight foot stops here, open diapason, flute, solitional. I've got the principal four, and I've also got the oboe just to add a little bit of weight to the sound. On the great, I've got open diapason, number two, not too heavy, the carabella just to add a bit of warmth, and the principal four to add some brightness. I've also got the swell to grate on to couple the manuals together. And I've got the grate to pedal and the swell to pedal, coupling both of the manuals down to the pedal. And I have a 16 foot board on stop on the pedal just to give us that extra base foundation. So this registration that I've drawn will be a useful mezzo forte registration, strong but not strident, supportive but not overwhelming. Here's a few bars of Praise My Soul. That sounds like a very good registration for an introduction. When I then begin the first verse, I want to add something brighter so that I can bring the congregation in and encourage them to sing strongly. So perhaps I might add the two foot on the great, the 15th. That extra bit of brightness, which the two foot gives, will encourage your singers to respond enthusiastically to your introduction. Now, Praise My Soul in most hymn books has four verses, and the four verses have very different character and very different style. The first verse and the third and fourth verses have special organ arrangements that are designed to accompany unison singing. So you're imagining strong congregational singing in those verses. The second verse is written in four-part harmony, so perhaps you might have a choir that will sing in harmony and the congregation will join them singing the tune. Or if you have a very musically talented congregation, perhaps they'll sing some harmony as well. For the harmony verse, you want something that's perhaps a little bit more supportive rather than overwhelming or too bright. On a three manual organ, you have the option of coupling the swell down to the choir and the choir acts, if I put on three eight-foot stops and a four-foot stop, the choir acts almost like a mini great organ. It's just a quieter 
counterpart to the grate. That can be very useful because it means that you don't necessarily have to change stops too much between the verses. However, be aware of the pedal because if I keep on that registration I've just used and I leave the grate to pedal on and I start playing the second verse on the choir, suddenly the pedal line is really standing out. That's because it's still coupled to the grate and the grate is much louder than that registration. So you suddenly hear the bass line and it's overpowering the rest of the texture. So make sure that you never couple something to the pedal that is louder than the registration you're playing on the manual. So what you could do here is just knock the grate to pedal off and put the choir to pedal on. But if you've only got two manuals, then you're going to have to stick to the grate. And perhaps you might just make a quieter registration so you could knock off the 15th and the forefoot and just leave the eights on the grate but leave the same registration on the swell. And this is what this sounds like for verse 2. Certainly that's a warmer sound and one I think that will be much more encouraging to your choir as they sing their harmony parts. It'll also just be a little subtler so that the harmony parts sung by the choir might come through. Now, what if your choir is not singing harmony, or perhaps they have the Sunday off? Well, in that case, maybe you might want something brighter still to encourage your congregation. The third verse of this hymn, Father Like He Tends and Spares Us, is written in most hymn books to be sung only by upper voices, so sung by female voices um, on the whole. This is very important when it comes to considering registration because female voices and male voices on the whole are pitched an octave apart from one another. If I were to sing this verse, I would sing it like this. So I'm not actually singing the melody as it's written here. I'm singing it in the standard male voice pitched down an octave. Father like rather than father like. Whereas if you have this verse sung by female voices alone, they'll be singing up that octave. So the effect when you have upper voices only is that the texture is rather thinner because suddenly rather than people singing in two different octaves, they're all singing just in the higher octave. Likewise, if you have a verse for lower voices only, suddenly the upper octave drops out and you only have the lower octave. We need to bear this in mind when we choose registrations because different registrations will encourage or perhaps discourage the upper voices or the lower voices. Upper voices, because they're singing in this range, the range that you play the melody in on the organ yourself, in the right hand, you need something brighter and higher in pitch than their singing pitch. That's why you need four foot stops. So if you were to use only eight foot stops, Let's try this, eight foots on the choir and only eight foots on the swell. I could have couple swell to choir and then swell and choir to pedal. We'll play a little bit of this. Certainly it's a lovely registration, it's a very nice sound. But if you're accompanying upper voices, you're playing the melody at the same pitch they're singing. And therefore, they may find it a little bit hard to hear your accompaniment because they're singing at the same pitch as it. Why is that a problem? Well, it might be difficult for them to keep in time or perhaps to keep in tune. So when you're accompanying upper voices only, you really need four foot stops. They can be just soft four foot stops. Maybe let's add the four foot principle on the swell. The box is closed, so it's a very subtle effect, but it'll still be there. It'll just 
be over the singing range of the upper voices in your choir or congregation. And as you're playing, if you happen to notice that your upper voices are starting to go a little bit flat, then you might want to open the swell box so they can hear a little bit more of the forefoot. Now, if you're playing for lower voices alone, male voices, you don't have to worry about that because if you play on eight foot stops alone, you're still playing an octave higher than the average male voice sings. But be careful that you don't use a registration that's too gentle or too thin because particularly basses, they have a much broader quality to their voice which needs to be supported by a thicker and more sonorous organ sound. Best way to do this is to add reed stops. So you might like to add the oboe perhaps. You might even like to add the cornopian but with the box totally shut. But if you're playing for a normal congregation, which is a mixture of male and female voices and children's voices, which mostly sing in the octave higher range that female voices sing in, you really need to have eights and fours and ideally some sort of reed sonority as well. Now, as you go on through the verses, your registration should not only respond to the sound that you're hearing from your singers, but it should also respond to the meaning of the text. This verse, verse 3, Father like he tends and spares us, is a much gentler verse in its tone and in its meaning. So that seems the appropriate moment to use eight soft eight foots and soft four foots. Something like this. When you come to the final verse, you want something uplifting. You want everybody in the church to sing at the top of their voice, particularly if it's the final hymn of the service. But at the same time, you don't want to shock them. You don't want to overpower them. A good place to start with your final verse, particularly the final verse of the final hymn of the service, is with organo plano. So eight, four, two, on your great and swell, and maybe mixtures, and maybe reeds. But bear in mind that for your average congregation, the mixtures plus the reeds all of a sudden will be very, very loud, very overpowering. So what I usually do is I use the swell, eights, fours, twos, mixtures, the cornopian with the box about half open, and then I use eights, four and two on the great, coupled together, it will sound something like this. That would probably be enough for me to accompany a congregation here on an average Sunday morning. <laughs>